Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky and today we have about a foot and a half of snow out there. So we are going to be doing some food preservation projects today. We're gonna to be wrapping up a couple projects we started before and we're gonna be starting some new ones. One of the first things we are going to do is, let me bring you back to yesterday. I did a little bit of prep yesterday in order to get ready for today. This is what I'm going to do on this day to prep for our big food preservation project. The baby's next to us. You might be able to hear him talking. He's chiming in. So this is all the garlic we have left. That is probably 60 to 70 heads of garlic. And I found the easiest way to break them up into cloves is to take this meat tenderizer and just pound the entire head and they kind of explode. And then I take the tenderizer and I pound each clove. I did about 10 of these at a time and then I would take some time to actually peel the papers off. I tried everything on this day. Josh had uh, you know two bowls and I was shaking the bowls together trying to get the papers off but when you have this much garlic I just found the fastest way was just to take that meat tenderizer smash the whole head and then smash each clove individually and get them peeled. This probably took me about two and a half hours to get all of this peeled and this is about half the garlic that we grew in last year's garden. This is early March when I was processing this and I'm really glad I was able to get to it because I did not lose any to mold this year. Maybe one or two cloves here and there, but last year I lost, <laughs> the baby's talking, <laughs> I lost about 25% of my garlic by the time it was February when I went to peel the rest of it. And I think part of that is because this year, the majority of what I grew was soft neck varieties. And the year before I grew a lot more hard neck varieties and soft neck varieties have a much longer shelf life in a fresh state. And so that's something to consider when you grow garlic is are you gonna wanna grow hard neck or soft neck varieties? I didn't plant any hard neck varieties this year in the garden. The one thing is when you plant hard neck varieties you get a garlic scape and so unfortunately this year I'm not going to get any garlic scapes but I am glad that I didn't lose any garlic to mold but it did take quite a bit of time to process all this garlic I wanted to get it all done in one day so that I could clean up this mess you can just see it kind of took over my kitchen but I was able to sit there and enjoy um I was watching some YouTube videos and listening to some audiobooks and things like that. So I was able to kind of catch up on some of that while I just sat and enjoyed the process of peeling a whole bunch of garlic. Now it is the morning of the current day we are going to spend in the kitchen. Here are some chicken backs. These are chicken bones and things I've been saving from a couple different parties where I broke down whole chickens. I put those in my big 30 quart pot and I got some water on them. I wanted to get these on the stove and starting to simmer before I got ready for the day because we are going to be canning this chicken, or excuse me, we're gonna be making broth and we're gonna can the broth and we are gonna can some of the chicken because there's gonna be some meat that we're going to be able to get off these bones. And then we are also gonna make dinner out of the chicken and we're gonna use this broth to make dinner tonight too. So I'm making this super, super simple, just salt, pepper, water, and the chicken bones, and I'm gonna get this on the stove, and I'm gonna get this simmering away while I get ready for the day. And there it is. So we are going to be preserving up that garlic in a new way that I've never done before. I'm excited about the way we're gonna do that. Another project we're gonna to do today is we're gonna take these freeze dried onions and we are gonna turn them into onion powder. One thing about freeze drying is it does not reduce the amount of space something takes up. The volume that goes in is the volume it comes out. So I freeze dried four trays of onions, which got me four half gallons, so two gallons of onions chopped. And I wanna condense this, so we're gonna turn this into onion powder. I also have some onions here. These are onions that I grew not last year but the year before and I dehydrated and I've not been using them. I mean I've used about half of this but since we moved here I haven't been using them because I've been keeping them in this pantry not next to my stove. These are not freeze dried. These are dehydrated onions. So I'm going to turn this into onion powder as well so that we can have onion powder that's by our stove so we can start using that. We can kind of get rid of some of this these jars that are up here taking up too much space. 
which will be kind of cool to see the difference between powdered freeze-dried onion powder and dehydrated onion powder. I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and do these first thing. There's a couple more <laughs> preservation projects I wanna to get to today as well if we have time, which we should have time. So let me go down, let's go down in the food room before we start this project and we'll get out the other things that I want to preserve up today. Because today's a snowy day, I'm just gonna spend most of the day in the kitchen. So let's go downstairs and get the other things. When I was trying to figure out what I was gonna cook for dinner today, I was looking through my freezer upstairs in my kitchen and I had two bags full of chicken parts that I had saved from when we parted chickens for the garlic peeling party and the galantines. And I wanna get those two gallon bags of chicken parts out of my freezer. So I thought I'd bake some chicken soup because you know we have all that snow out there tonight for dinner and I'll just make extra broth. Well, I remembered that when I went through and we organized our, my deep freezers that I had a bag of chicken drumsticks that need to be used. Josh and I don't eat chicken drumsticks very often and these have been in my freezer for longer than I'd like. So I'm gonna put these in the pot and I'll just use the meat for the soup and whatever extra meat we'll go ahead and can. And same thing with these chicken wings. If we don't use these, these are gonna be freezer burnt. So I'm gonna grab these two things out of the freezer. And then another thing I wanna can up today, and I've never canned this before, but my mother-in-law had canned it and we used it during this pantry challenge for some blueberries. These are blueberries from the previous homestead's garden and they need to be out of the freezer because they're going to get freezer burned pretty soon if we don't because they thawed just a little bit a couple days ago. One of our freezers died that these blueberries were in and they didn't thaw completely. I caught the freezer in time that we didn't really lose anything. And I want to get these out of the freezer into jars so that we can use it in baked oatmeal. I can use it in as a topping for Dutch pancakes or whatever it might be, French toast. And I can just get them out of the freezer so they don't get freezer burnt or anything like that. So we're gonna get those canned up. And I think that's everything we need from down here. So if you were with me when we organized the freezers down here, I had mentioned that we had this old freezer and Josh was worried about it dying. Well, about a week and a half after I organized it, this freezer did die. And thankfully I did catch it in time where the only thing I lost, I didn't actually lose anything but I was a little, I'm a little worried about these blueberries. If I don't can them, they're gonna get, they're gonna get freezer burn real quick. So we were able to take this freezer that we already had upstairs in our garage and Josh and I were able to move it down here. It took us a while to get it down here and everything is safe now. So let's go upstairs and get this stuff preserved. I just put those blueberries in the freezer until we're ready to can them. This is the pot that I started earlier this morning. These packages of chicken have one of these liners in them and I don't want that obviously in my soup. So I'm gonna run some cold water on them just long enough to where I can peel this off and then we can get this in our pot. While I'm waiting for those chicken packages to thaw just enough where we can get them in our pot, let's go ahead and make some onion powder. Let's start with the onions that I dehydrated. I'm excited to, mmm, they smell good. Start using these, that's the problem with them being back there is I just don't use them because out of sight, out of mind. I have my high powered blender here. You could just use a regular blender too. I think that would probably work just fine. That is a lot of onions. These are homegrown. So this is something I'm really proud of and I wanna make sure I use up. So we're gonna put that in our blender. I think that's probably a good texture there. And friends, just like that, we have one thing checked off our list. We're gonna do the same thing that we just did with the dehydrated onions, with the freeze dried onions. I'm not gonna wash this or anything because it is the same thing. And this made 
one medium size freeze dryer load made two gallons worth of onions without blending them up. So I'm curious to see how much volume this will have once it's blended. And I did a uh, red onion, but if you wanted to make onion powder white, you would just use white onion. My goal this year was to not have to purchase any onions from the grocery store and try to have all the onions and garlic locally sourced and or homegrown. I'm not yet sure if we've made that goal. I bought, I think it was 160 pounds worth of onions in September of last year. And I probably have about 40 pounds worth of fresh onions left. So we'll see if that gets us up until I hopefully am harvesting some of my own onions this year. So already you can see a big difference that this has two of the jars in it. The smell of this is incredible. We were able to fit all four of those jars into one of these jars. And I'm gonna put the lid on that really tight. And that is our onion powder. Dehydrated and freeze dried onion powder. On my counters where I keep the spices that I use the most of, and I haven't had onion powder in my house for a long time. That's why I haven't had onion powder up here. But I'm gonna have my homegrown onion powder next to my homegrown garlic powder. This extra onion powder, the freeze dried onion powder, I'm gonna put down here for backup because I'm not gonna need that right now. I have to say it feels good to have onion powder back in the house. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to make our garlic paste that we are gonna preserve up so that we have garlic ready to use whenever we want. I only saved three heads of garlic that's fresh so I am not gonna have to peel any garlic anytime soon, which I am looking forward to, because peeling garlic is not my favorite thing to do. I think I'm gonna get a better texture with our garlic paste if I do it in a food processor as opposed to the blender. As much as I don't love making extra dishes, I think I'm gonna get a more of a chopped texture as opposed to something that's just completely pureed. So in here, we are going to start processing all of this garlic. I'm really looking forward to this. This is something that I did not do when we preserved garlic last time. I still have two quarts worth of home or freeze dried garlic powder. So that should be more than enough to get me through until we harvest garlic in July. I think I will have accomplished my goal of growing a year's worth of garlic, plus having enough to plant as seed garlic for an entire year. So I'm gonna start with three cups of garlic in our food processor. I am gonna add a little bit of avocado oil just so that we can make kind of like a paste that we can scoop out into dollops. Almost anything I would need garlic would have a little bit of oil in it anyway, so I think that this is gonna be just fine using a little bit of oil in it. Here's the consistency. You can kind of see it is sticking together, but I think I'm gonna pulse it just a couple more times. Perfect when we put it in our recipes. I think that's gonna be the perfect consistency. Let me show you what I plan to do with this. I have a cookie sheet with a piece of parchment on it and a cookie scoop. This is my little cookie scoop. I'm gonna make little garlic pucks and we're gonna flash freeze these in the freezer and so I can pull one of these out and I think that will be the perfect one or two of them for a recipe and that's probably the equivalent of three or four heads of garlic. 
I need three or four cloves of garlic per puck, not heads of garlic. That would be a lot of garlic. This is why I wanted to use a little bit of that oil so that they would stick together and I could make these little pucks. So three cups of garlic got us 27 little pucks plus that little bit of oil. If you wanna do this and have fresh garlic prepped in your freezer, instead of using the pre-diced stuff, but you don't have homegrown garlic and you don't want to sit and peel this much garlic because this took me a long time to do. You can buy at Costco, I'm sure Sam's Club, we don't have a Sam's Club around here, but I would assume they probably would sell it too. You can buy a big bag of pre-peeled garlic and you could do this yourself and you could get that fresh garlic flavor without having to peel it all yourself. All right, so this time I put four cups because I think this food processor can handle four cups. A couple gloves of oil. Last year I planted 570 something heads of garlic. This year I did not plant near that many. I probably did about half. Because honestly I think I planted more garlic than I needed last year because I have shared a bunch of this garlic too with friends and family. So I did not plant as much. I think some of this garlic will probably get us through next year as well. I'm gonna stick these in the freezer to flash freeze and I'm gonna show you how we'll end up storing them in the freezer for long term. But this is only about half the garlic that I peeled. So hopefully we'll get about one more tray just like this. Before I keep working on the garlic, I wanna get the chicken in the pot to cook. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit cause it is boiling a little bit harder than I need it to. You can see these chicken drumsticks are still completely frozen, but they're thawed enough that I could get that piece of plasticky thingy off. So we're just gonna plop. We're gonna gently, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just put them in gently like that. And we're gonna let this cook for a good 45 minutes or so. We're gonna let that chicken cook and then we will pull the meat off that bone. In this pot, all I added was garlic and salt and, no, I didn't add garlic. All I added was garlic, all I added was salt and pepper and chicken. My lid is stuck to my burner. I'm just keeping this broth super, super simple. But when you make broth at home, you could add carrots, onions, celery, all those things. But I want this just to be a plain broth. Let's see if I can get this on here working the first time. We did it. almost got two full trays so I'm going to set this in the freezer and let this flash freeze I'm thinking those are probably going to take 45 minutes to an hour to freeze and then we can finish processing them I was able to get oh see this stopped simmering because I put those frozen pieces of chicken in it so I'm going to turn the stove up a little bit I was able to get the chicken wings out of the package. It feels really good to get these out of the freezer because I don't cook chicken wings and I don't cook chicken drumsticks. And so they've just been sitting in there for way too long. So we are gonna use this meat just like we would any chicken meat. And we're gonna make some delicious broth. It's gonna be super rich broth because of the chicken wings, the chicken backs, and those chicken drumsticks. 
But now in my freezer, all I have are whole chickens, chicken breast, and chicken thighs. I am trying to pare back on all the things that I store in my freezer. Not pare back like necessarily the quantity. I want to make sure I still have a stocked pantry and freezer. But the variety, and I'm trying to be a lot more purposeful and intentional on the cuts of meat that I keep in my freezer, only the cuts of meat that I use on a regular basis. So I should not be storing jump drumsticks and wings in my freezer because I don't use those, but I use chicken breast, chicken thighs, and whole chickens all the time. And that's one thing that I'm working on in 2023. And for pantry challenge, we now have onions dehydrated, turned into powder. We have all the garlic processed except for three heads of garlic. So I don't have to worry about those going bad. And we have taken care of these two packages of chicken that now I don't have to worry about going bad, getting freezer burnt in my freezer. I'm gonna take a second to reset my kitchen before we start working on those blueberries because it is a little bit of a disaster. I have my food processor out, my blender out, all these jars. My dishwasher is running, so unfortunately I can't put all my dishes in my dishwasher, but I can put them in the sink. I definitely enjoy being in the kitchen better when I clean up as I go. I made Josh a baked oatmeal this morning. It's pumpkin winter squash. No, it's pumpkin summer squash baked oatmeal, so I'm calling it a harvest baked oatmeal. But I can tell that since I've kind of been deep cleaning and organizing my kitchen, I just enjoy being in here better. I spend a lot of time in here, so I want to try to keep it as enjoyable as possible. And one way I can do that is by trying to keep it clean and organized and tidy as I go. The kitchen has kind of been reset so we can get going on these blueberries. Now when you can blueberries, I've never done this before, but you can take fresh blueberries, put them into a jar, top them with water, put a lid on, can them for 15 minutes. But I wanna use these in baked oatmeal and I do wanna add a little bit of sugar so all that to say you don't have to add sugar but sugar is a preservative and it helps keep the color and it helps brighten the flavor a little bit so i am going to add a little bit of sugar and then when i go to make my baked oatmeal i can just add a little less sugar because i know that my blueberries are going to already be sweetened a little bit and because my blueberries are frozen i do want to warm them up so that i can pack more into each jar so I'm gonna get them just warming up in this pot. And then I have a bag here, and this is all the blueberries from the last homestead. So once these are canned up, we won't have any more blueberries from the last homestead in the freezer. I'm gonna add one cup of sugar to our blueberries. are cooking I'm not trying to turn that into a sauce or anything I just want to heat them up so that I can put more in a jar and then they don't have the ice crystals on them when I put them in the jar so here I am gonna set up my stove top canner or my um, countertop counter I should say not my stove top counter I did wash this ring I took this seal off and I ran it through the dishwasher so I'm gonna get this on we don't really need this for water bath canning on our countertop canner but I want to get that on there so they've got that I want to use my stovetop canner today so that we don't have any canning doing on the stove because I'm going to be making dinner on the stove I just want all of the canning stuff contained over here I'm going to can the the blueberries in half pints because I think that would be perfect for baked oatmeal or kind of opening up to put over top of waffles or french toast or whatever and so I am going to fill this up and we're going to use this today. With this canner, you can pressure can or water bath can. So I'm going to say we're going to water bath can and we're going to water bath these for 15 minutes. Because our blueberries are going to be warm going into the jar, I want this water to start warming up. You can see how this is starting to create its own juices. This is why I kind of wanted to warm up the blueberries as well, because we will have to top our jars off with water 
And if I can have the blueberries kind of create their own juice, then I would rather that. But if there's not enough of this juice to put over top of the blueberries by just a little bit, then we will use a little bit of water. But these are ready to get into jars now. The sugar has dissolved. I already have these half pint jars washed and ready today to use. I've got some lids and rings here. I'm gonna go through and put the blueberries in first and then I will top them off with the juice. So the juice on this one comes to about here and I need it to come all the way to the top. On this one, the juice comes to about here and so I need it to go all the way to the top. So let's see if I have enough. I shouldn't call it juice, I should call it syrup because that's basically what it is. This is kind of a blueberry syrup. I wish you could smell this, it smells so good. I don't want to lose any of it, so I'm trying to be really careful, making sure I don't overfill. I am not going to waste this because this is super flavorful. We're just going to pour it into one of these. We were able to get nine half pints, which is perfect because one of these will make one baked oatmeal or enough for one breakfast with some leftovers if we use it as a topping for waffles or pancakes or something like that. Blueberries in the jar and this water are at the same temperature. There we go. Once this comes to a boil, then we will, it, I don't have to do anything, I guess, because my electric canner does it all. It'll start counting down for um, 15 minutes that's how long that that needs to can for in a water bath. We don't have to pressure can it because it is an acidic food. Our chicken is fully cooked and tender. So what I'm gonna do is move my pot closer to this stainless steel pot and I'm going to get the chicken out of here and I'm gonna let this chicken cool a little bit so that I can peel the meat off the bones because right now it is way too hot for me to touch. This is clearly way more chicken than I need for dinner tonight. So whatever is extra, we will go ahead and can. You know what? I think I want to freeze dry it. Or some of it at least. I want to do one freeze dryer load worth because I don't have very much freeze-dried broth right now, and freeze-dried broth is amazing. It's basically like powdered bouillon that you would purchase at the store, except it doesn't have any uh, artificial flavors or colors or additives or anything like that. It's just all homemade goodness. This broth is gonna be so gelatinous because 
of all the legs and wings and everything with all the collagen and things and skin that we cooked in this broth. I just took our chicken and had it out in the snow so that it could cool a lot faster. Now that it's cool, I'm gonna take the chicken and I'm gonna put the chicken that we're gonna eat or can for dinner in our Dutch oven because that's what we're gonna cook our soup in. I just rinsed this out from the blueberries so we could just use the same thing. And then these bones are gonna go back into our pot so that it can keep simmering away. So I have this little bowl here. I didn't need to get a big bowl out or anything because I can just keep dumping this in the pot to simmer away. But I am gonna take my time and make sure that I get any little bones or any pieces of cartilage or anything like that off the chicken. I'll put the skin in here too because I'll let that continue to simmer away so that the broth can just continue to get richer and richer and richer. I really like snowy days because they kind of force me in to be inside and they force me to kind of work on projects that have been on my to-do list for a while and these projects were definitely on my to-do list. I feel so good to have these chickens taken care of and the garlic taken care of and more of the onions taken care of because the last thing I you know want to do and I'm not perfect at it but food waste does bother me especially when I go through the effort of growing it like all that garlic and luckily we didn't have hardly any that was bad this year last year I lost about 20% of my garlic due to mold and this year I caught it in time so all of this can go back into our pot chicken we got we didn't get as much chicken as I thought so I, I'm not gonna can it half this Dutch maybe not even half maybe one third of this Dutch oven is full of chicken so I'm gonna take half of this and put it in a freezer bag and I'll just freeze it so I'll have some pre-cooked chicken in the freezer next time I want to go to make something with chicken and then this chicken will be for dinner tonight I want to make our soup in this pot but I don't want to cook this chicken anymore because it's already so tender. I'm gonna put it in the soup right before I serve dinner. So I'm gonna put my chicken in this bowl and then I'll make the soup and right before it needs to be just warmed up, we'll put this chicken into our soup. I got some bread going. I'm gonna make some garlic knots to go along with our dinner tonight. We're gonna have chicken soup and garlic knots because I wanted to find a fun way to use up some of that garlic we just processed. So that chicken's just gonna go in the freezer and I'll have a convenient chicken item next time I need to use it. I'm gonna throw this chicken in the fridge because I'm not gonna need it for a little bit. And in the time it took us to pull apart our chicken, our blueberries in the canner are done. I have a towel here. Here's our vegetables I cut up for tonight's dinner. So I'm just gonna put the blueberries on a towel. They've been done for about 10 minutes and I've just kind of let them sit in here and kind of cool in the canner for a few minutes. I'm so excited about these blueberries. I've never had or never canned blueberries before but my mother-in-law gifted me some and it was perfect. So I'm excited to have this on the pantry shelf. It may have overfilled that one because it's dripping a bunch of blueberry syrup out of it. So I'm going to unplug this and I'm going to let this cool so that I can dump that water out and put that away. And now I'm going to go get the garlic out of the freezer. I was trying to think what I needed to do next. Our garlic pucks are nice and frozen. I would not want to leave these in my freezer without wrapping them up because they will permeate the freezer with super garlicky smell. I'm gonna put these in a freezer bag and I am gonna put them in a Ziploc one that I'm gonna to toss when these are done because these are going to be so potent, I won't be able to salvage the bag. 
and I will have to double layer them. So I'm gonna put as many in one bag as I can. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my next bag before I double wrap it because my hand is just covered in garlic and I want to try to have the outside bag not have a ton of garlic on it so that it's not going to permeate my freezer. how excited I am that I got all this garlic peeled and the next many, 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 many times I need garlic, I don't have to peel garlic. It's not my favorite thing to do, so I'm glad that I was able to just sit there and get it done, watch a little YouTube, enjoy the process of something tedious and mind numbing. So two layers, definitely want two layers in your freezer because you do not want everything in your freezer to taste like garlic. And these thaw out really, really quickly because I've had garlic, I have garlic cloves, whole garlic cloves frozen in my freezer and they thaw really quickly. So I would imagine these are gonna thaw just as quick. Okay, into the freezer they go. Whoa. Not onto the floor, freezer. not canning that chicken because this is going to be way too much broth for the freeze dryer. So I am going to can some of this broth up. And so I just pulled that chicken out and put it into two pints. I normally can my chicken broth in quarts, but sometimes that's too much. Sometimes I just need a pint. So we are going to can today this broth in pints. This broth still has all of its bits in it that I don't want in my broth obviously and there is still some fat on the top so it, what you can do if you want to guarantee every single one of your jars is going to seal strain out your broth let it cool skim the fat off and then can your broth but I don't have time for that today so I am going to just stir my broth so that there's kind of less fat on the top so I'll get kind of more of an even amount and then I'm going to take a little strainer and I'm going to strain my broth just right into my jar. I want to try to get things out of my freezer and that's why I decided to go ahead and even though I had put this chicken in the freezer I would rather it just be shelf stable, so we're gonna can it. I already have my electric pressure canner out too, so I might as well just use it since I have it. Now this broth is going to be a little bit of a lighter broth because I didn't have it simmer overnight. It's been simmering, I think I got it going at like 8.30. And I don't even know what time is it. Oh my goodness, I overfilled that jar. Let's see, what time is it? It's 3.45, so it's been simmering for quite some time, but if I wanted it even darker and richer, then I could have it simmer for 24 hours. I also didn't add any onion peels to it. A lot of times when I can my broth, I'll add onion peels. And the onion peels not only add good onion flavor, but they do tend to darken your broth because there's pigment in the peels. But this is just a really light broth. I'm gonna taste it. 
I added salt and pepper, that was it, to it. Oh man, that is delicious. That has such a clean chicken flavor. Oh my goodness. I don't really like to add a bunch of herbs and things to my broth. Be oh, I'm talking and I'm not paying attention. Because if I wanted to turn this into pho, which is an Asian broth, then I would want to add ginger and cardamom and star anise and some sugar versus if I'm gonna make this like I am today, chicken noodle soup, then I might add things like parsley and sage and thyme and rosemary. And so if I just can it where it's just a clean chicken flavor without having any specific notes to it, then I could make it and turn it into whatever kind of dish I want at the end. This broth is so good. So my trays, my freeze dryer trays fit about one quart. So I think what I'll do is I'll strain out four quarts of broth. I'll get those in the refrigerator. I'll get the broth really cold before I put it in the freeze dryer because I do not want to put hot broth into the freeze dryer because that is going to make my freeze dryer have to work a little too hard, harder than I want it to. You know the drill after this. I'm going to wipe the rims, put new lids on, put rings on. These are going to can for 90 minutes. Broth only takes 20 minutes to can, but because I have two jars of chicken, you have to can it for whatever the longest time is, which is my chicken, which is 90 minutes. I've got my big pot that I need, or big bowl here. I'm going to quickly strain the rest of this out. So I can only fit seven jars in here, so instead of canning the chicken for 90 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and can the broth for 20, and then I will can the chicken after that, but it'll just give me, this will just be done faster than that. I must have put my seal on upside down. garlic knots in the oven cooking for dinner. My dishwasher is now started. We got all the garlic processed except for those three heads, but it'll be good to have a couple fresh heads just in case I need that. There are our garlic knots. They're not quite done yet, but in the microwave I took some of that garlic that we processed and I melted some butter. I got to melt it again, but I'm going to brush that on the top once those come out of the oven. I also have a bowl of broth here cooling. This is the broth that I'm gonna put in the freeze dryer and I want that broth to be very, very cool before I stick it in the freeze dryer. So all I have to do now is wash our big 30 quart pot and we basically have this kitchen clean and I can go relax, dinner is done. I just need to add our chicken that we pulled off the bones in here. I need to add some peas in here and this is done as soon as those garlic knots come out of the oven. So that's super productive. I'm probably not going to get the freeze dryer going until tomorrow with that broth because I want the broth to completely cool. I'm going to skim the fat off. I'm going to put the broth in the trays. I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me in my kitchen as I kind of wrapped up a few of these projects slash got things out of my freezer and onto my pantry shelf. It feels really good. It's feeling so good during this pantry challenge to do these preservation projects, to do a big inventory. I think organizing the freezer was a huge benefit because then I was able to see what I had in there and I could kind of evaluate what needs to come out. And I guess that I had that freezer die and that's why I canned those blueberries, but I'm excited to have those blueberries canned up so that we don't lose them to freezer burn. And so we didn't lose those chicken to freezer burn too, because that would be pretty sad. I know that you know, we can't always avoid food waste, but if I can try to avoid it, I like to do that. And one way to prevent that freezer burn from ruining those chickens is to get them out of the freezer 
into a jar and we've just extended the shelf life of that product. And that is kind of my goal. So thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. If you enjoyed this video, I can pop a couple of my other videos here between now and my next upload. If you are new and you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. We are just getting into this next year's, oh, that's my garlic knots, food preservation season. And I can't wait to see what this garden holds for us. So if you're new, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.